Hey guys, and welcome to August. And while I'm sitting here drinking my morning cup of coffee on the 7th, I'm wondering where the rest of the year has gone. It has been absolutely horrendous for a lot of different people, but here we are. With that, we've got the choice games from Humble Choice, like always. First up, it looks like we've got Sifu. Sifu is a really interesting combat martial arts roguelike in a way. Um, you are a student hell-bent on revenge. Um, I have... I don't actually have this specific game. I've kind of always wanted it because it was kind of cool looking. It's very difficult. Like horribly difficult um, by some people, but really interesting. This is whether you choose to play as a male or female character in Sifu, you will ponder that question on your path for revenge. Hunting down your family's assassin, one against all, you have no allies. Countless enemies and a mysterious amulet to bring you back to life every time you die. Yet be warned, your secret weapon comes with a hefty price to pay, aging. And its consequences. I thought the idea of aging in this game was really cool. Um, because of the fact of you get your techniques get better, but your um, like life and stuff kind of go down. This is learning by fire. Your enemies don't wait their turn and they don't broadcast their intent. Dodge, parry, strike, use combos and be like water making its way through the captivating environments. Learn how to master your art, whether by fighting through the underbelly of a nightclub, scrambling through a refined gallery to avoid getting surrounded, or vertically navigating a towering office building. Careful positioning and clever use of the environment to your advantage are key to your survival. Use everything at your disposal. Throwable objects, makeshift weapons, windows, and ledges, and odds are stacked against you, and you will be offered no mercy. It does seem like a cool game. Uh, I probably would play it since now that I'm going to have it. Uh, next up, we have High on Life. If you have not heard of High on Life, I wonder what rock that you've been under this entire time. Like, come on, guys. I don't know. I don't know specifically where you've been, but High on Life is awesome. Um, I've already played it and beat it on the Xbox. Um. But having it on PC is really kind of cool, too. Um, it is a very funny game by the team that made Rick and Morty and stuff like that. Squanch Games. Uh, hopefully they're continuing to do games, even though the voice actor, who is kind of like one of the main factors, is not a very good person. Well, I mean, there's not much else we can say about it, right? It is a first-person shooting game where all the guns that you get in the game all have their own personality and talk to you. Um, is, this, is this a VR game? Although many of Squanch's previous titles were rooted in VR, High on Life was built from the ground up from a traditional flat-screen devices, which is really good. Uh, there is no multiplayer. Yeah, there's no multiplayer. Um, there's no DLC at all, so which is kind of cool. You get one flat game. But it is kind of fun. You get knifey. They're all kind of raunchous, rebellious, sort of things like that. If you haven't played it, now is a good time to play it for such a good cost. Uh, next up, we have Gotham Knights. Uh, I will let you on, on a little secret. I do have this game. I got it to play with one of my friends. I did not like it. They've kind of gone like a weird way with the Gotham games. I did not like the traversal. Even though each character had their own traversal methods, I did not like the actual, like, gameplay. Sadly, I know. But if you like to play with friends, this does have co-op. It's really kind of cool. Uh, as last month, the same thing. We have DC Universe Infinite one-month free trial. Now, I don't know if... You got this last month, and if it will just keep stacking, that would be kind of cool. But I highly doubt that's going to be a situation that they're going to allow us to do, right? Uh, next up, we have Black Tail. 
this is a witch's fate. Basically, you're Baba Yaga. Flat. Um, if none of you know about Baba Yaga, it is a mythological tale. I think it's Russian or somewhere around that region of a witch that lives in a house that has turkey legs. <laughs> it says, become the guardian of the woods or the terror nightmares are made of. Forge the legend of Baba Yaga and live out its origins in Blacktail, a one-of-a-kind blend of intense archery combat, magic, and dark storytelling set in a vibrant fairy tale world. You play as Yaga, a 16-year-old girl accused of witchcraft and expelled from medieval Slavic settlement. When living memories of your past return as foul, walking spirits, you are left with no other option than to hunt them down in hopes of unraveling your own mystery. It does look like a first-person, like, archery magical game. So there's that. Uh, decide the fate of the land and its inhabitants. Witness the impact of your decisions on your skills through Backtail's morality system. Track down elusive spirits with your trusty bow and gauntlet. Engage in thrilling boss fights. Craft arrows and potions. Hunt wild game and gather resources to survive in the ominous woods. Find hidden treasures to learn more about your surroundings and history. Collect lost recipes and brew elixirs to improve your abilities and reshape your playstyle. So that seems kind of cool. Very much a like Skyrim sort of uh, gameplay. Next, we got uh, Astral Ascent. This is a 2D platformer. Action adventure? Kind of. Uh, Astral Ascent, a 2D platformer roguelike game set in a modern fantasy world. As one of the four heroes with very different personalities, you must escape the Garden, an astral prison guarded by 12 powerful and vicious bosses. Those Zodiacs. That's kind of cool. Uh, I do like the art style, as always. They do really good, like, pictograph art styles. <clears throat> Unlock dozens of unique spells for each of your characters. Optimize your own build or try new ones to face all the challenges you'll find on your journey to freedom. Get progressively stronger with time to match up to you with your foes. Each run will test your skills and your reactivity. So I guess these are the four heroes. Um, some of those are bosses, blah, blah, blah. We got Ayla, skilled assassin. Uh, Kieran, an orphan that has learned life the hard way. He's a strength build. Kaylee, talented sculptor, become a warrior to recover the freedom of her people. Octave, trained by a powerful witch. Story that opens up one piece at a, uh, at a time, which is obviously the roguelite aspect. It is co-op. The weight of destiny is too heavy to carry by yourself. Don't worry. Bring a friend to play with two-player co-op mode. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Looks good. Uh, Diluvian Ultra Chapter 1. Okay, I guess it's just like Diluvian Ultra. Uh, this looks like a first-person action-adventure game. Like Lovecraftian, even. Ooh. Uh, includes 10 levels, a hub, and 6 different weapons with 30 different upgrades and enemy types. Okay, let's see. what uh, Become the immortal warrior Prince Attila, awakened after millennia in deep space by an impotent invasion of your tomb ship. Pick up your blood sword and investigate. Are these intruders the old enemies from your past, or as yet unknown foes to conquer? No matter, they have rooted themselves into the ship and defiled all that is sacred to you with their foul presence. It is time to drive them out into the void and save your people. You know, strategic combat. Diluvian Ultra's combat is built around dual damage system where you have to combine weapons to be effective. Armor absorbs damage, but some weapons are designed to quickly strip it off your targets, unable to kill them, but exposing them for a single lethal blow. You have to be careful, though, as enemies will mix their attacks the same way. Collect and consume blood to upgrade, upgrade your weapons and pick up various power-ups at the opportune moment to become Vengeance Incarnate. If only for a while. So there's only 10 levels, though. But I mean, it's Chapter 1, and it's only a $10 game, so that's not bad. I'll, I'll, I'll grant it. That's not bad. Uh, okay, we have Universe for Sale. 
Uh, just off the off the just the image that we've got right here, this looks like a narrative built game. Uh, space station nestled in the clouds of Jupiter, a bizarre bazaar where a young worried woman crafts entire universes in the palm of her hand. A mysterious cultist who stripped the flesh from his bones in order to reach enlightenment. Ugh. Here, there's a universe for sale. You buy it? In a bizarre bazaar, say that five times fast. <laughs> There's a worried woman crafting entire universes in the palm of her hand, which we just read that up here. Universe of Sale is a hand-drawn adventure game set in the dense clouds of Jupiter where sapient orangutans... Really? I guess so. Yeah, there's a picture one right there. <laughs> Work as dockhands and mysterious cultists strip the flesh from their bones in order to reach enlightenment, which we in we read up here. I don't, I don't know who did this description though, but it's whatever. Uh, the nameless master, intrigued by stories of Lilith's ability to crack, create universes, finds her on a rainy night to discuss the unique power that she has. For someone so awe-inspiring, she explains it like she'd explain how to brew coffee. But it isn't just the master who wants to know more about Leela, who threatens to unravel the mystery at the heart of the universe of for sale. So choose a cup, find some ingredients, and Lila will craft a universe down to your particular specifications. Only question is, you buying? You, you buying? Probably not. All right, this looks like the means. This means warp. Oh, this is a co-op. Um, like chef game, but not, you know, like they have that overcooked, um, game that came out, which I have. It's awesome. It's actually a really good party game, but this looks like a space game where you have the same basic procedurals, uh, fly solo or up to three other loyal crewmates as you boldly go where no one has gone and survive to talk about it before. Obtain and upgrade new weapons and systems for your ship as you venture deep into a procedurally generated universe filled with increasingly grumpy and murdery enemies. Map your unique path through the stars. Remember that stakes are super high. One wrong move and it's game over. Up to four players with local or online co-op, obviously. Every game is unique with randomized maps. Easy to understand, tough to master. You can take much more, Captain. You'll be master of your ship in no time, but only the canniest Captain can tame the entire galaxy. With gameplay that players themselves have shaped through alpha and beta releases. This means Warp is a thrilling yet cruel mistress. Remember, in space, no one can hear you cry like a little baby. Yeah, this seems kind of fun. Um, I wonder what kind of, like... Having this ability as a... Sorry, that's my dog. He's whining. He needs attention all the time. And when nobody's giving him attention, he cries like a little baby. But those are the games. That's the games for August. Yeah, we are looking at um, coupons. 66% off of Saturnalia. And the DLC, the only DLC, I guess, for High on Life called High on Knife. The uh, charity this month for August is the WWF. WWF is active around the world working towards conserv conservation, sustainability, and ecological restoration. No idea what that means. We don't have a video to really kind of go about with it. But a charity is a charity and hopefully it does well. Um, I already have this game, so I might be giving this out to somebody. I don't know who yet. Um, could be you. Who knows? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing Sifu. Maybe Blacktail would be kind of cool. Um, this means Warp would be kind of funny. I might check that one out as well. Uh, if there are any ideas on what you'd like to see on the channel, let me know. But as always, be kind to each other. Hopefully this day will end up nice.